Now I have, uh, it, here's another question for you. If, what would, what would you say now to the young Lunel? What advice would you give if you could go back and talk to yourself 20 years ago? What, what advice would you give to the young Lunel now to the wise? Lunel? Put the cocaine down <laughs> first. And don't steal that money. <laughs> That would be my that, advice. To that would that man. would be good. Put the cocaine down and don't steal that money. Don't steal that money. Then people know you did it. Yeah, and you're gonna go to jail <laughs> for four months and eighteen days in Twin Towers Correction Philly, Caesar Chavez Boulevard, downtown Los Angeles, California. <laughs> That's what's going on. Five three six three oh two no more booking number. Campbell, roll up your property. That that's what happens when you make a bad decision. That's what happens. Now, how about this though? When you made the bad decision, what were you able to do to say, this is what this is, and get back to your dream? Well, I still fucked up after I got out of jail, but the one thing that I did do that I think was very prophetic, you know, when you, when you, when you get released from jail, mm -hmm. you get released back into the clothes you was arrested in. Okay. And when I was arrested, I was arrested at my home in the Bay Area. They extradited me back here to Long Beach. And I mean to LA and, and put me in jail. So I had on a like a pajama top and some overalls and a robe. That's what I was arrested in. That's also what I was released in. Whoa. So I was downtown LA, like in the jewelry district, you know, waiting on the bus in a robe, looking like I belong there. <laughs> <laughs> Looking so, like, like I so belong right of, down there. You got out of jail and looked like you was home. I, I, yeah, oh, oh, here I am. Now I live on the street. I right. didn't have no money. The bus driver let me ride to Long Beach when my girlfriend met me. The next day, she bought me a sweatsuit. Before I went home, I went to the comedy store. And it was Fat Tuesday. No way. I said, guy, because everybody knew I'd been in jail. You know, comedy community knows every motherfucking thing. So everybody knew I was in jail. I was like, guy. And he's like, oh, I'm so glad to see you. I said, bro, you got to let me go up. I got some shit. I got to get off my mind. Now, this isn't included in the Fat Tuesday documentary, but they did film this story. It may be shown at another time. So guy introduced me i went on stage i told him about what had happened to me for the last four, last four fucking months i said i'm traumatized i can't eat no more apples as long as i fucking live because when you go to county jail every day they give you a fucking punk bitch ass apple in your mystery meat motherfucking sandwich lunch <laughs> okay i said i'll never eat a fucking somebody give me an apple i'm gonna throw it at somebody and <laughs> i and i just told what had happened to me about the strip searches and the the bitches looking in your ass and all this shit, cause I went through all this shit. Right. And um, you know, I knew it was. I said I knew it was time to go, cause there was a bitch that came in there that looked like Snoop, and I wanted <laughs> to sit next to the bitch. I said, oh, it's time for me to go. I'm this <laughs> she said a girl that looked like Snoop. She looked like Snoop Dogg. It was a girl. She had braids. Yeah, tall, lanky bitch. Looked like Snoop. <laughs> I'm telling you, the bitch looked like Snoop. And so I was like, hi. <laughs> So I knew it. the Lord let me out after that. He's like, no. You no. got to get out of there. So you get out of jail. You go to the comedy store. You yeah. get back to your. Get a standing ovation, by the way. And kill, obviously. Yeah, standing obviously. ovation. I, fresh out. Before I could even fresh go home. Fresh out of jail. See, before I could <laughs> even go home and see the baby I hadn't seen in four months, I had to push myself on that stage. Do you understand what you just said? Yeah. You had to come to the church. The stage is the church for mm -hmm. us. You know, mm -hmm. I, I never forget when I lost my brother that same night I had to perform. And um, I could not understand how I was able to do it. I was traumatized, you know, and um, it was the pain. The pain of losing my brother was so sudden. And it was literally like my brain like were you on automatic, like on remote control? I can't explain it to you. It, it's it, you just reminded me. It was like one of those moments in my life where I was just like it was an outer body experience. It was almost like all my trauma was sitting here, but my physicality and my uh, 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 intellect was still moving like a like a like a robot or something. Yeah. But when I got on stage, right, I had one of the best performances of my life. Of my, of my life. Is that crazy? When I was the saddest. 
Isn't that crazy? It's unbelievable. <laughs> the, 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 one of the most traumatic moments of my life, I had the most outstanding performance. And I never forget at the end of that show, there was a lady who brought her mom up in the wheelchair. And she said, Mr. Bellamy, can you take a picture with my mom? My mom hasn't been out the house in two years. And it's her birthday. And she hasn't been outside since my dad passed and my mom we haven't seen our mama laugh in two years and that's when i, I think knew. i saw her on my 600 pound life i don't know who it was no no but you know what i'm I saying know, and the you... lady said and the lady said she said she started crying she said mr bellamy you mean so much to us because we needed to laugh and i was like well then it's 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 bigger than us it's really uh, a ministry if it's a you, ministry if you're really doing it right and it is a gift mm -hmm. because we can do it at will mm -hmm. whenever i can make anybody laugh right. anybody absolutely and the bible says that laughter does the so good like medicine i've had so many people inbox me especially during quarantine uh -huh. and shortly after like you got me you know i started this youtube show hey lunell on youtube 62 episodes are up, and I started before George Floyd and Amar Aubrey. So my show literally went from happy, lunel, quirky into this dark, dark racial place when we were doing all that stuff. And then I realized I can't go as dark as I'm slipping because they're looking for me to pull them out of the darkness that they're in. Absolutely. So then I had to come back up and start being cheery again. And that's all documented on this, on YouTube. And People wrote me and like, you got me through the quarantine, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing your show every Wednesday and I'm a lunatic for life. And you know, and that, and that right there, that's bigger than a pool or a view or anything like that to know that you moved somebody like that, just little us. Just yeah, just little man. Us. Hey, listen, man, we just don't know our, our full impact or our potential until we really, really hear it. Cause a lot of times when we tell jokes, we realize you know, or we don't realize like, okay, the laughter is one aspect of it, but the change is something else because we have messages that are in our jokes too. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? If you're doing it right. If you're doing it right, there's some lessons in there. You know what I'm saying?